السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على البلاء حي على البلاء الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله إن الحمد لله نحمده تعالى ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونتوب إليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات الله وسلامه عليه أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كلام الله عز وجل وخير الهدي هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أما بعد Indeed, our praise is due to Allah. We praise and we beseech Him and we seek His forgiveness. We seek refuge with Allah from the, and we seek His guidance and we repent to Him. And we seek refuge with Allah from the evilness of our own souls and the evilness of our deeds. Whoever Allah has guided, there's no one to mislead. And whoever He has led astray, there's no guide for them. I bear witness that there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah. He is one and He doesn't have any partners. As I bear witness that Muhammad ibn Abdullah is His servant and His final messenger. Sallallahu alayhi As for what follows, for indeed the most truthful of all speech is the book of Allah Or the speech of Allah And the finest and best of guidance Is the guidance of Muhammad Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam And the evilest of affairs with Allah Are novelties and newly introduced affairs into the religion For every novelty will be will lead to innovation of innovation will lead to misguidance and all misguidance ending places the hellfire as for what follows wallahi brothers and sisters in islam there's no doubt that we know and we realize that the soul or the desire that is within all of us that allah created in every human being that that desire that is in all of us or that it hates the difficulties that comes with acts of obedience the soul the desire the nafs it hates the difficulties that comes with acts of obedience even though even though it is well known that the end result of that obedience is 
is the everlasting bliss, everlasting joy. That's the end result of that obedience. In spite of that, the soul dislikes it. It hates it. And it loves the Raha. It loves the entertainment of right now, of the pleasure of the immediate pleasures of this world. It loves that. Even though the soul knows that ta'kubuhu hasratun da hasratun da'ima that follows that regret that will last forever because there's no going coming back a regret while feeling while being punished in the hereafter in spite of the sight of that fact the soul still loves that the soul it took qiyam al it hates to get up in the night and pray to Allah Ta'ala and fasting during the day the soul تَكْرَهُ التَّكْبِيرَ فِي الذَّهَابِ إِلَى الْمَشْجِدِ تَبْكِيرِ فِي الذَّهَابِ إِلَى الْمَشْجِدِ The soul or the desires It hates for you to go early to the masjid It tells you to be there at the very moment It don't tell you to come early The soul hates that The desire hates that reality how many individuals will sit in the clubs or in the gym or in places of entertainment for hours upon hours and have no recall, no problem with that. But the little moments he feel in the master, he can't wait till those moments is up so he can leave out of the house of Allah because the soul hates that, brothers and sisters in Islam. The soul can be in the marketplace. The women will be in the marketplace going through aisle from aisle to aisle looking at clothing upon clothing upon clothing or product upon product upon product but she has difficulty sitting in the house waiting from prayer to prayer sitting in the house of Allah praying upon prayers upon prayers sitting in the house of Allah reading the book of Allah Azza wa Jal the soul hates that no doubt about that reality Yet at the same time, the soul is very stingy with the little moments it has in the house of Allah. The little moments it gives to its servitude to Allah. It rushes through it. It makes you rush through it and hurry out of that obedience. Because I got to watch my program. I got to look at this act. I got to play with this game. The soul is a treacherous thing to us, brothers and sisters in Islam. The soul, it hates in faqil mali fi ta'atillah. It hates you spending wealth in the, in, the, in the acts of obedience to Allah or doing obedience to Allah, spending your wealth with that which aids the obedience of, of Allah in people's lives. Your soul hates you to spend that. So the whole hates you making jihad in the, feast, in the path of Allah, struggling in the path of Allah to learn this deen so that the soul or the desire will come and give you the most easiest of excuses to stop benefiting what will bring you closer to Allah. I don't have enough money. Like one brother said to me one time, I said, Ahi, keep coming to the class. He said, I'm going to resign from the class because I don't have the money to pay. I said, you don't need the money. Come to class. But that shaitan, he don't want good for you, Ya Abdullah. That's why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Huwa yaqa'udu ala bab al khayrat. He sits at the door of goodness. He sits at the door of goodness. As shaitan he used the bipul so that he can keep you back from achieving the good but he don't bother you for evilness this is why we can't come together because you know if we come together and command each other with the good and forbid each other from the evil it strengthens ties it brings us closer to Allah it establishes the deen of Allah on the earth of Allah the way Allah wants the earth to be established so shaitan works on keeping us having animosity as the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said walakin tahrish bainakum he want to keep animosity between you so we're finding many amendment the most the minutest of reasons not to be with one another not to be around one another for the sake of allah coming together to learn the deen of allah shaitan ain't having that so brothers and sisters in islam for that reality, Allah Ta'ala says, for all of us, 
كتب عليكم القتال وهو كره لكم that has been prescribed upon, upon you fighting when it is hated when it is hated to you perhaps you may hate a thing that is good for you but to hit bull or you may love a thing that is لكم, that is evil for you Wallahu ya'lam. Allah knows and you do not know the equivalency of that or what is can relate to that is when your little baby wants to do something that may harm it and you stop it, it always starts crying. Now when it wants when it wants to do what will harm it, because it don't see the harm of that thing. That's the reality of us and our desires. And what Allah wants from us, because we don't learn the book of Allah. We don't learn the Sunnah of Muhammad, or we know the bare minimum, so we commit the greatest maximum of crimes against our own souls and not realize it. Because we don't see the happiness that this deen provides for us in this life and the next life. The soul hates commanding with the good and prohibiting from evil. The soul hates for you to give dawah to an individual to the deen of Islam. Like one Muslim who became known out there giving dawah, I think his name is Yusha, Caucasian brother, who accepted Islam. He said when he, when he finally left selling drugs and being an evil person, and accepted Islam, someone invited to him to Islam who was out there doing selling drugs with him, but he was a Muslim. He told him with his little knowledge he knew about the deen, and he became a Muslim. And then he couldn't understand after he saw the greatness of Islam. Why well, none of all the Muslims I know in my life that I work with and I'm around never invited me to this beautiful way of life? Because we're afraid, brothers and sisters. We don't think the dunya is controlled by Allah, we think it's controlled by everyone else. But Allah reminds us أَمَّنْ يَرْزُقُكُمْ إِنْ أَمْسَكَ رِزْقًا What's going to happen if Allah prevents the provisions for the one who you think provides for you? If Allah refrains his position, then what? Then what you going to say? That's when we want to blame Allah. So the deen, the soul, brothers and sisters, it hates establishing rectification between the people. The soul hates doing acts of obedience. The soul hates all the things that makes Allah pleased with you. And it calls you to oppose that. And Allah Ta'ala put that reality in all of us. And it's a part of our trial in this life. But the reality is that if you adopt to her, that if you obey that soul, ahla ahla katka, it will destroy you in this life and give you temporal happiness. Whereas obedience give you an ongoing, continuous happiness that cannot be fractured, that cannot be temporal. It's continuous in this life that goes into the next. That's why Allah described the mu'min. They don't grieve, nor do they have no, they do not fear, nor do they grieve. I Meaning they don't be overwhelmed by grief. They don't be overwhelmed by fear because Allah has blessed their hearts and their lives. Because of what they've learned from their who their Lord is and who his messenger is and what he's been sent with and what his message was about and what he's been commanded with from Allah and his messenger. And that gave him a level of happiness that only this way of life can provide for the believer. And this individual who obeys the soul, khasiratha, he leaves off, lost off and ruined his dunya and his hereafter. That's why Allah Ta'ala says, Say to them, Muhammad, that verily the ruined and the destroyed are those who have ruined and destroyed their own souls and their families. Yom al Qiyamah, on the day of judgment, they won't get to be with that family. They won't find no comfort, everlasting punishment because you obeyed the desire. So the law commanded the messenger to inform them the miserable one is the one who loses his family and his own self in the hereafter. He loses that bliss. He loses that everlasting love with Allah Ta'ala. So if you obey that soul, then you have oppressed your soul. When you obey that soul, 
you have oppressed your own self. Whereas you have put before yourself in the anger and wrath of Allah and his chastisement and him humiliating us. Look at the Ummah today in the Muslim world. Allah has humiliated us because we've given obedience to that nafs, to that soul, brothers and sisters in Islam. And that's just with the nafs. Then we got a second enemy, the enemy called the shaitan. Shaitan is another enemy that's on top of you, on top of your own nafs, your own desires. Shaitan comes to us. And he's the enemy of our father Adam and all of his offsprings in us. He came to, he became the enemy of mankind, every one of them. And Allah Ta'ala warned us from listening to him. On top of warning us from listening to the evilness in our own selves. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about shaitan, Inna shaitan lakum adu. Shaitan truly is for you an enemy. Fattakhiduhu aduwa. So I command you to take him as an enemy. And Allah ta'ala says, Alam a'ahad ilaykum. Did I not take a covenant, a covenant with you? A contract with you? Ya bani Adam. O oh, sons of Adam, did I not take a covenant and a contract with all of you, O oh, sons of Adam? And la ta'bu the shaitan, that you must not worship as shaitan. Innahu lakum adubun mubin, for he is for you truly an open enemy and clear and a clear enemy. For verily he commands us, Allah subhanahu wa taala, when it's the that he was seeking protection from the shaitan. And the meaning of that is ask Allah to guard you and protect you from his evil. Because shaitan, the shaitan from amongst jinn, he does not refrain or he does not slack. He does not need a rest. He does not take a break from his job of misleading us, of trying to make evil beloved to us. For the shaitan from amongst the jinn, he don't desist upon mankind. But it's not just that shaitan. Shaitan is, can be the, from amongst the jinn, from the unseen. Or the shaitan, brothers and sisters in Islam, can be from amongst human beings. The shaitan can also be from amongst the animals that's around us. And we have, and the Messenger of Allah, Allah and His Messenger, has forewarned us about all of them. As Allah Ta'ala says in Surah Al An'am. And thus we have made for every single prophet an enemy. Devils, Satans from amongst mankind and from amongst jinn. And they aspire with their evilness to each other. Zuhra fil qawl with adoring speech. That is wurura. That is nothing but deception. Deceptive alluring speech. To each other. The shayateen amongst jinn. The shayateen, they, they aspire the shayateen amongst mankind. And amongst the animals. With this alluring speech to mislead us brothers. This is his goal, that man ain't relentless. He ain't resting, he's relentless. He wants your destruction, he wants your ruin. They help each other upon the destruction of the son of Adam. The shayateen amongst jinn are those who whisper. Their way of destroying is whispering to our hearts, whispering to our desires, inciting, make the ghara'i bishaw, inciting us to evil, with takhdiri an al khayr, and they strive to remove you from doing anything that's good. Delay you from a lofty. They say, well, choose, a, even if they can't get you to leave off good altogether, they'll let you choose lesser forms of good so you get a lesser reward than you getting the tribe striving for the greater good to get a greater reward. Because if he can't get you with the greater, he'll get you with the lesser. He's relentless. He don't want you to have high ambitions for the hereafter. He don't want you to have high ambitions for the ummah. He don't want you to have high ambitions for yourself that will earn the contentment of Allah in this world and the next. 
He wants you destroyed. This is what he wants. This is his objective. This is his goal. He is a aduwun khafi. The shayateen amongst jinn is a hidden enemy. An enemy that we cannot see. An enemy that we cannot see him in his natural form. Rather he flows through our bodies like our blood. Through our veins like our blood. Because he wants to destroy. As Allah Ta'ala says about him. Inahu yaraqum. Verily he sees you. Verily he sees you. Who are wa kabir? Him and his followers. And his troops. Min haythu la yaraqum. From a position where you cannot see them. So our protection from him is not walls. Our protection from him is not doors. Our protection from him isn't a gun, isn't being physically strong, but our only protection from him is the dhikr of Allah, the remembrance of Allah. Our only protection from him is turning to Allah with a heart, showing him you in need of him when you're in the state of heedlessness, because that's the door he enters upon us upon. And all of us is afflicted here and there with ghafla, with heedlessness. Or he comes through the door of shahwa when you covet and desiring something that Allah don't want you to covet and desire. He comes from that doorway. Or he comes from the third doorway of al ghadab of anger and rage. When you're angry, because when you're angry, the wrong thing seems like the best thing. And the right thing seems like the most furthest thing, the worst thing you can be doing. These doorways, as shaitan, brothers and sisters in Islam, he comes to us from them. As for the shayateen from amongst men, amongst mankind, that shaitan, that's the one that we can see. That's the one who will sit with you. That's the one who will talk to you. That's the one who will deceive you with the, the way from your religion. That's the one from amongst human beings. And how abundant are they, brothers and sisters in Islam? They're not a few amongst men. That's the majority of men today. And how abundant the abundant is their propaganda to mislead us to do evil. And treacherous it is. For they are individuals who invite all of us to evil by all prop means that's necessary and they're capable to use. They invite us to bestiality. They invite us to following your whims and desires. And they name it another name. They call it freedom of character, freedom of speech, freedom to do what you want. That's what they call it. That's why they got nude beaches. That's why you can do art and be naked in the streets here in New York and not be arrested if it's art. He gives it another name so you say, oh, that makes sense. Shaitan deceives brothers and sisters in Islam. Shaitan comes to the women, deceive them that they need to be out of their houses more than they need to be in them, cultivating their children and raising them to be righteous people. Like, well, why not? Why he don't? Why he does this? And this is the reason. And the signs of it is why kids now shoot one another in school and kill them because they they don't have a mother to raise them and cultivate them and give them the character they need. Cause she got to get that career. She got to make the money. She got to do that dunya. Like the Columbine boys who was the first ones to do this evil act is shooting innocent people in the schools. If you read the story of them two boys, their parents was career chasers. They had made no time for their children. And the police said all the mother, one of the mothers had to do was, or the mothers of both of them had to do was walk in their rooms and they would have seen the plan of what they were going to do on the walls of their of their bedroom, but they, because they didn't mind doing that because mommy and daddy don't check on them. Mommy and daddy don't investigate. Mommy and daddy don't check what they're doing in their lives because all I want is to get them the PlayStation. All I want is to get them the best of what's in style today. All I want to do is provide them the best form of writing means. But I don't care about his character. I don't care about his connection to his creator. I don't care about him having noble qualities and characteristics. All I care about is that he got and he looks good. And that's why they have no problem shooting one another and killing each other in these schools. And all we want to do is imitate them brothers and sisters in this land. We do the same. Brothers, put on your boots and earn that income and take care of them ladies. So she can stay home and raise your children. 
Because when they become 15 and 16 and 17, and they want to do drugs, and they want to do crime, and they want nothing to do with the masjid and the deen of Allah, فَلَا تَلُومُوهُمْ فَلُومُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ Don't blame them. Blame yourselves. Because it ain't teaching them Islam saying, get up and pray. Get up and fast. Get up and boy, you're going punishing them with reading the Quran. Not rewarding them with reading the Quran. It becomes a punishment. This is how we teach the deen to our children. So when they get old enough to be independent, they don't want nothing to do with you or the deen that false Islam that you're representing for them. Because that was not the way Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Awlad. But that was not the way the Messenger of Allah raised his children. And it shows amongst our children. We find the most minuscule reason not to send them to the master to learn his deen. They got swimming, they got football, they got that stuff gonna help them in the hereafter. And you co-sign that nonsense by giving it precedence over the deen so they don't give no importance to the deen. So when they do come to class, if you do let them come. They don't have what they was given by the teacher last time. Because it ain't important to my parents, it ain't important to me. And we have to wake up because whoever does not raise their child the way that Allah and His Messenger commanded, the Messenger of Allah said, He will not smell. The beautiful smell that comes from paradise. And it reaches over 500 years in distance, meaning they will go nowhere near the paradise because your kutunya is more important than your children's upbringing. Children only got one childhood. They only got one period of time to be children. You don't get a second chance when you turn 18 to fix what you should have done when he was 2, 3, 4, and 5. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. I had a student in the class, brothers and sisters in the Islam, that asked me, ask me, is it shaitan and Allah brothers? And they fought against one another, they split. And Sha Allah was the good brother and shaitan was the evil brother. Because you put these televisions in front of them and let that educate them. And you don't put the book of Allah in front of them and let it cultivate them. هذا وصلى الله وصلى وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسولنا الكريم نبينا وحبيبنا وأسوتنا وقدواتنا محمد بن عبد الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن استنى بهداه إلى يوم الدين. أما بعد شيطان has many means and one of his greatest means to destroy us is to call the television and no cell phones and social media Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يُحِبُّونَ أَن تَشِيعَ فَاحِشَ الْفَاحِشَةُ فِي الَّذِينَ الْفَاحِشَةُ فِي الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا لهم عذاب أليم في الدنيا والآخرة والله يعلم وأنتم لا تعلم. And we're going to end the khutbah with this point, and we continue next week on the rest of the points. And that is, brothers and sisters in Islam, Allah تعالى says in Surah An-Nur, indeed, Allah and indeed those who like and love. That obscenities be spread amongst those who believe. For them is a severe chastisement in this life and in the hereafter. Allah knows and you do not know. This ayat in the Quran is to deal with a serious social woe that we have fallen victim to because the people who don't believe in Allah do not read, don't know nothing about this guidance do this evilness. And what is this evilness? The spread of fahisha, obscenities. Uncovered and undressed women. And people out of being shown. Evilness being spread like music. 
and we send it, we do the same, we send it to each other in text. Or it's talking about also those who like to spread obscenities about he said, she said about their brothers and sisters, that which they cannot confirm, that they just heard. You spread it. Did you hear about what happened to Fulan, the people Fulan? Did you hear what happened to so and so and so and so? And we spread this. Ruin our hereafter. Allah Ta'ala says that whoever likes that obscenities be spread. And Sheikh Sa'di says, here, Huna, عذب الله من يحب ذلك لم يتكلم عن عذاب من يفعله. He says Allah is talking about the one who just like to see this stuff that was well, obscenities to be spread. He's not referring to the ones who do the spreading of the obscenities. Why? Why do Allah address the ones who just like obscenities to be spread? Fahisha. Because he wants to kill the spread of obscenities by attacking the love of obscenities in the heart. Because if you hate the spread of wickedness, there's no way in the world you're going to spread it or participate in, in receiving it. So Allah Ta'ala described in the Quran the punishment for those who like obscenities to be spread. And many of us as Muslims, we will spread a woman in a bikini on Facebook because it might be a little message that's good. But we spread that obscenity. Allah prohibited the women to go out of their house uncovered without their hair, their neck, their ears, and their body parts being covered and concealed. So if you spread that, you're spreading an obscenity. We never, as believers, mix good with bad. We only do the good. That's why Allah Ta'ala says about Himself, Inna Allah ha tayyib. Allah is wholesome and good. Wala yaqbalu illa tayyib, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said. That Allah is wholesome and good. And he only accept that which is wholesome and good. Islam ain't a religion where you can mix evil with good and you still get some good out of it. That Allah throws all of it away. That's why in Islamic law, children of the bed, the father who fornicated and have a child through fornication has no rights over one another. Because the asu, the origin of how they came in existence was, was khabib, was, fil was filthy and foul. You can't clean up filthy and foul. Because Islam is only wholesome and only accept that which is wholesome. So this is required for us to be like that in our faith. Do not send nice things in an ugly viewing. In a, with obscenities mixed in it. Saying this is a good message because it's in a song. For this deen, brothers, we've been sent to correct mankind. To bring them to this way of life. Thus we have made you the balanced nation. So that you will be witnesses against mankind. How you witnesses and you letting them tell you how you supposed to do things. How you, what if you supposed to be entertained by. What you supposed to love and hate. We cannot allow that. We their leaders. They wicked because we wicked. We wrong, they gonna be worse. If we right, they will be better. Because in spite of that, we the leaders of the earth. And when we're disobedient, Allah gives the power to our enemies to punish us so we repent and come back to his obedience. But when we obedient, he gives us the dunya. He gives us leadership on the earth. That Allah has promised those who believe and do righteous acts. He will give them succession and leadership in the earth. Meaning they will rule, their king will rule. He will give them leadership in the earth. As he did for those who came leadership and those who came before them. And he will truly give authority to rule the religion that he's pleased with them to follow. That's the difference between the Dawah of the Sahabas in their time, and the da'wah of the Muslims today. When they came to a place they gave da'wah, that da'wah ruled, and the people wanted it. Today, when we give da'wah, individuals accept the same. They don't rule over the people. Because many of us have not allowed the Book of the Sunnah to rule over our everyday lives. If we don't allow the Book of the Sunnah to determine how we spend, and how we earn, and what we strive for. We do a little bit of deen and a lot of what they tell us to do. 
And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said for those who do that مَنْ تَشَبَّهَ فِي قَوْمٍ فَهُوَ مِنْهُ يَعْنِي يَوْمُ قِيَامٍ That whoever imitates the people, he will be with them on the day of judgment. هَذَا وَصَلَّى اللَّهُ وَسَلَّمُ مُبَارِكَ عَلَى نَبِيَنَا مُحَمَّدًا وَعَلَى آلِ وَسَحْبِهَا أَجْمَعِينَ رَبَّنَا آتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا حَسَنًا وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ حَسَنًا وَقِينَا عَذَابَ النَّارِ وَقِينَ الصَّلَاةِ اللَّهُ أَكْبَرُ اللَّهُ أَكْبَرُ أَشْهَدُ أَنْ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهُ وَأَشْهَدُ أَنَّ